Mahoning Valley leaders effort to secure a major defense finance center demonstrated the power of regional collaboration, while Stewart Healthcare's hospitals see improvements amid ongoing uncertainty following a bankruptcy court report. Those stories and more on today's Daily Fuzz. The Daily Buzz is brought to you by 717 Credit Union. Hello everyone, welcome to The Daily Buzz. I'm Mike Moliterno. In 1992, leaders in the Mahoning Valley made one of their first major pushes to secure a federal payroll processing center for the region. These centers, overseen by the Defense Finance and Accounting Service, were projected to create between 4,000 and 7,000 jobs each. Then Congressman James A. Traficant Jr. asked the Western Reserve Port Authority to manage the $100 million bid for one of these centers, a 100-acre parcel of land in Liberty Township donated by the Edward J. DeBartolo Corporation, was proposed as a potential site, with an alternative downtown location in Youngstown also considered. By the June 1st deadline, the Port Authority had submitted three proposals, two for Liberty Township and one for a downtown Youngstown site that would incorporate the former Higby Department Store building. Financing for the construction was tied to a proposed half percent sales tax, with costs estimated at $110 million for the large facility. In December of that year, Youngstown's proposal made it to the list of 20 finalists competing with cities like Saginaw, Michigan, Evansville, Indiana, and Cleveland. Local officials were optimistic, submitting their final proposals to the Department of Defense in early 1993. Despite the momentum, the project hit a major setback in March 1993 when U.S. Defense Secretary Les Aspen rejected the entire process for consolidating these centers. Though the Mahoning Valley did not secure the payroll center, local leaders saw the effort as a valuable lesson in regional cooperation. You can read more in the story on our website. Stewart Healthcare System's local hospitals remain in a state of uncertainty, but conditions at the facilities have shown improvements according to a court-appointed ombudsman. Susan Koenig, appointed by the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in Houston, reviewed Stewart's hospitals in Massachusetts, Trumbull County, and Sharon, Pennsylvania in August. Her report, filed on Friday, highlighted several areas where patient care had improved since her previous visit in June. Koenig observed no significant issues that required immediate attention regarding patient care. She also noted that staffing levels were adequate and saw active efforts to recruit new staff, signaling a commitment to maintaining quality care. In instances where equipment was broken, hospitals had been renting necessary equipment while waiting for repairs or replacements. There was also improvement in meal preparation and service across the facilities. A settlement approved on September 17th by U.S. Bankruptcy Judge Christopher Lopez allows the hospitals to remain open. Insight Health System of Flint, Michigan has been tasked with overseeing operations at Hillside and Trumbull Regional until a permanent buyer is found. At Sharon Regional Medical Center, Koenig found staff concerned about a potential closure. The hospital had lost several surgeons, but staffing levels in other departments remained adequate. And the Ohio Small Business Development Center and Export Assistance Network at Youngstown State University is teaming up with the Public Library of Youngstown and Mahoning County to host a series of business workshops in October. These workshops are designed to help attendees discover and take advantage of business opportunities. Participants will learn from experts covering topics such as market research, financial modeling, financing options, exporting opportunities, and available business resources. The first session will be held on October 8th and will focus on data-driven business decisions. On October 17th, the second session will introduce financial models and financing strategies. The final workshop on October 28th will focus on international trade trade, government contracting, and business resources. Each workshop will run from 5.30 to 7 p.m. with a wrap-up session until 7.30. The workshops are free and open to the public, but seating is limited to 50 people per session, so registration is required. And that is going to do it for today's Daily Buzz. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. If you'd like to dive deeper into any of these stories, links are available in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Mike Moliterno. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, savings power to give your business an extra boost. Business savings, certificates, and business money market. Seven Seventeen Credit Union, make your money work as hard as you do. Check out our business money market and CD rates at seven seventeen cu dot com slash rates.